you know, uh, I've been talking about the law. I want to talk about faith, you know, because really the, the thing <laughs> that Paul is pushing about faith, you know, is... It is walking by what we do not see because the law is all about forms. It is about figures. It is about what is seen. And, and, what, I've, and what I've been teaching about the law is that the law ha having a fit, a form of the knowledge and of the truth that is in Christ and you know and and as Paul said that you know Christ is the end of the law for righteousness when I understand what that means you know he came to fill up what was lacking in the law and Faith, the faith that we live by is that I'm dead and Christ lives in me. But we know that according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that to be at home in the body is to be absent from the Lord Jesus. But we walk by faith, not by sight, as he says in verse 7 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You know, and as the writer of Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, you know, <laughs> the modern faith movement is like, you know, has moved that towards material gain and and that is not what the the faith is about you know it is trusting you know when jesus said in john eight fifteen, when he said to the pharisees he says you judge after the flesh i judge no man but yet if i do judge my judgment is true he says for i am not alone but the i and the father who sent me and we got to see that what he says, judging after the flesh, he's talking about the law, the can, what can what can be seen, because you see that Jesus is saying to him in another place in another gospel that so you judge after appearances, don't you know? Don't judge by what you can see. Judge righteous judgment, you know, and. I mean, we need to come to an understanding of that because people have turned that into lasciviousness also, you know, and, you know, faith, walking by faith, walking by the true faith is that I'm dead and Christ lives in me. That's the faith that overcomes the world. And we need to understand that because that is what empowers us over sin. And, you know, as he said in Galatians 5, 16, 17, and 18, for if I say them walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the evil desires of the flesh or carry them out. He says for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and the two are contrary to one another so you cannot do the things that you will but if you be led of the spirit you're under no law and we need to understand the significance of being under the law because to be under the law is to be under the curse to be under condemnation to be to abide in death and you know, in Galatians, I mean, I've heard some people, so-called ministers, that try to 
when when Paul says in chapter four, he says, "You observe days and times and months and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I bestow labor upon you in vain." You know, and Paul is talking about the law there. He's talking about the observance of Sabbath days. He's talking about the observance of the new moons, the the feasts, and all of these things. And then in chapter six, he's because he 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 goes into chapter six talking about circumcision you know he says they desire to have you circumcised you know that they may glory in your flesh and if you if you'll start paying attention to things like that out of legitimate translations of the bible that haven't like completely mutilated god's word you know, and I think it is so important to have a good translation. And, you know, as for it comes, and I've, I've got into this in, in other videos. Proverbs chapter th uh, 3, verse 5, Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God. And he will direct your paths, your steps. You know, and it is so important to put all of our reliance in him. You know, and if we truly are in the faith, if we truly have been born again of water and the spirit, if we truly have been baptized into Jesus Christ and into his death, if we truly do believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and we are confessing him Lord, that means to make him Lord, we're surrendering our will. And that goes to that Galatians 5, 17, the spirit against the flesh, flesh against the spirit. So what we cannot do what we will. That's why he says those be led of the Spirit are under no law. And it goes back to Galatians, or to Romans 8, 1, where some of the modern translations have cut off the last half of Romans 8, verse 1, saying, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I mean, I mean we, need to under, we need to understand and you know satan is trying to creep in there and and uh corrupt god's word and and uh it goes to back to what paul said in ephesians 4 18 you know talking about us gentiles having our understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god that God had manifest to Israel. He says, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance because of the blindness of our heart. If, if Satan can keep us blinded and in darkness and ignorant of the truth that is in Christ, he can keep us from the life of God because Jesus was very clear in John 17, 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know you, the one true God, and Jesus whom you sent, to know him, to, to be one spirit with him, to, and Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, if, if we are abiding in him, that means that we're being obedient to him, because the, even as the writer of Hebrews said in i think it was verse 9 of chapter 5 he says he has become the uh author of eternal salvation to as many as will obey him you know because that is the faith the faith you know walking by faith and not by sight and that has everything to do with not walking by the law which is sin strength, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty six. You know, and you know, it's like Paul told 
the uh, the assembly at Galatia, he said, if I yet preach circumcision, he says, why do I suffer persecution of the cross? You know, I mean, you read Acts from chapter 19 all the way to 28, it's about Paul being beat, <laughs> whipped, Receiving 39 stripes five times, beat with rods three times, stoned. I mean, by Jews. I mean, you read in chapter 24 of Acts, there was 40 men that put themselves under a curse to neither eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. I mean... The faith, just because, you know, we were freed from the law to be freed from the curse. As Paul told the assembly at Galatia, he says, you know, cursed is the man who does not, you know, do everything that is written therein. He says, that's why he says in Second uh, Corinthians 11 that, you know, that they may be found even as we, because as he's saying in t to his letter at, to the church at Galatia, Galatia, the assembly at Galatia, that, you know, they don't, even they who are circumcised don't keep the law. You know, it, it, was, it was given for the time, he says, to be our schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ. That, like he says in Romans chapter 7, that sin by the commandment may become exceedingly sinful. For he said, I had not known sin but by the commandment. So that part of it is spiritual. But it's like the writer of Hebrews talking about the priesthood. They were made priests after a carnal commandment. You know, and, and as he said, if 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 the perfection were by the law, he said there wouldn't have been a need for a, another order of priesthood after the order of Melchizedek and and not after the order of Aaron. You know, because in Psalms 110 he quotes, you know, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. You know, and and uh, we need to we need to understand I mean our the beginning of our spiritual worship to God is is being planted in to the death of Christ. When we're baptized into him and we clothe ourselves with him and daily, as he says in Romans 12, 1, making our bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto him that is our that's our daily sacrifice that's the bare minimum that is the beginning the base of our spiritual worship to god you know we can't even begin to please god unless we do that daily you know we are through the faith of christ put the flesh to death not by our will, but by surrendering our will in him. Because as he says in Romans 9, he says, when he's talking about Pharaoh and he, this, his, his, his conclusion is, he says, therefore it is not a matter of him who wills, 
nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy, as he told Moses, you know, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on, and whom I will I harden. That's the way Paul rendered it into the Greek and translated over into the English. And you gotta understand that Paul spoke both Greek and Hebrew, and you see that in uh, I think it's Acts 19 when the when the Roman soldiers had pulled Paul out from being beat when Jews from Jerusalem had thought that he had brought a Greek into the temple and defiled it and they were fo they followed him and beat were beaten him when the Roman soldiers went and pulled him from the midst of them and when Paul said am I allowed to speak and he spoke Greek to them and when he began to speak to the Pharisees when he saw the Pharisees he spoke Hebrew I mean, we need, you know, Paul was given an abundant revelation of Jesus Christ. It wasn't something that he was taught by man. It was some, It was what he was taught by the Lord himself. You know, so that's, you know, that's why you, he says that in uh, for Second Corinthians chapter eleven, he said, "You know, though I may may I, though I may be crude in speech or not trained in, I may not. They've got it rendered as not being trained in speaking, but he was trained in speaking. And and what he who he was brought up under. And uh, he says, though I'm not." in knowledge because he was taught by the Lord himself concerning the revelation of Jesus Christ and and how that relates to us and there is so much of the form of the knowledge and of the truth in the law that Paul you see Paul relaying to us like Romans 12 1 presenting our bodies as living sacrifices every day the daily sacrifice you know which was part of the law that was a form of the law that was a figure then for the time present well that is fulfilled in us as we surrender ourselves in Christ who was our Passover lamb who was crucified between the evenings if you if you'll read the testimony that Mark gives concerning uh, Jesus Christ because Jesus was taken uh, the night before the Passover because they didn't want to take him on the day of the Passover lest there be an uprising by the people because they believed that Jesus was a prophet and so therefore on the eve of the Passover they took him and on the morning of the Passover the break of dawn they brought him to Pilate well by nine o'clock by the third hour nine o'clock in the morning he was nailed to the tree by, by the, the sixth hour at three o'clock in the afternoon he had given up the ghost he had given up his spirit he had breathed this final and and Mark gives testimony that you know the 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 veil that separated the holy place and the holy of holies where the where the ark was where the mercy seat sat that veil was rent in two. It that's why the reader, writer of Hebrews says that through his flesh was was made the entrance into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God. 
which was taken away when the first man, Adam, sinned. You know, we got to see that when, when, when man hearkened to his wife and ate of the tree that he was commanded not to eat of, and the eyes of them both were opened to know their nakedness, God drove the man out of the garden. And that Hebrew word drove him out is like a putting away as a as some as a man would put away his wife. And so we need to, we need to understand some of these things because the faith that is in Christ, you know, Jesus Jesus is a fulfillment. I mean he was spoken of since the the time that Adam and Eve sinned. I mean, we need to we need to see that. You know, Jesus was spoken of from from the time then, and then he was spoken of again by Moses saying that, you know, the Lord your God shall raise up another prophet from amongst your brethren like unto myself. And we got to realize what he meant, meant by like unto myself because he gave, he gave the law. And... He also said, whoever shall not hearken unto his voice shall be cut off from his people. So Jesus came, and that's why Jesus was constantly saying to him, if you, if you really believed in Moses, if you really believed his words, he said, you would believe me because he spoke of me. And we got, I mean, we got to understand that. I mean, and even Pilate, and, and you read the testimony of Mark, you know, when, when, uh, when uh, the Jews, after they're hearing the, the, the eve of the Passover, and on the day of the Passover, bring them to Pilate. Pilate knew that, that they were being moved out of jealousy you know, so but it was in fulfillment of scripture. It was predetermined by God's counsel as Jesus said then, he says, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from my father. You know. And as Paul said, there's no there is no power but that of God, you know. So, so we need to understand faith, what the faith is. I mean, Satan, Satan has done such a good job of distorting it by getting people chasing after, you know, material things that, you know, they he's gotten, he's gotten the waters muddy so that the people can't drink and the people can't see I mean, we need to understand what the faith is the faith, the one faith. Because there are so many faiths in the world, and I'm telling you. There, there are a lot of them out there that are they they are blinded and they're blind leaders of the blind and they're not on their way to heaven. If 
Satan can keep people blinded to the truth, he can keep them from the life that is in Christ. As, as Jesus, and I'll quote it again, as Jesus said in John 17, 3, and this is the eternal life that they might know you, the one true God and Jesus whom you sent. You know, faith comes by hearing, but the hearing for faith. Hearing comes by the word of God, the truth of God's word. So, faith isn't what we see. Faith is what we do not see. 